Yeah, I have statistics to back up that we have people that listen. Mike Schaefer. Anytime there's sort of a debate as to who can do something, Happer would always put his name forth. For sure. Husker 24-7 on The Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. I could be a star. Morning baseball for Mike Schaefer's Cleveland Guardians against the uh, Boston Red Sox on, on Patriots Day. That is sure to brighten. His day, but will he brighten ours? We're about to find out as Schaefer joins us now on the 42 Degrees of Soros hotline. Good morning, Schaefer. I feel like 10 a.m. baseball is something that they should strive for throughout the summer. It's just kind of nice. You I can just throw it on. Yes. It, it can just be there. We don't have to pay a ton of attention to it, but it's just sort of nice to have. Fortunately, during our show, uh, there's about 100 days during the uh, during the 200-day like baseball calendar where the Detroit Tigers are playing starting at like one o'clock. So we are like the official show of the Detroit Tigers. We watch them about every day. Yeah. Uh, how many Detroit Tigers can you name currently? Because they've, they've kind of shifted over. Tariq Skubal. A little bit. Like, Tar- Tariq Skubal. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's excited about Tariq Skubal. I'm just, I want to see if he can throw 100 innings again. Yeah. That's, that's where I'm at with it. Uh, Spencer Torkelson. Okay. Um, let's see here. I get some, uh, they get some other guys. I get some other guys on that roster. Don't they? Yeah. They have like 20, 24 other guys. <laughs> I mean, I, the Royals haven't run into the Tigers yet. So I'll, I'll find out like next week. Probably. I I thought they played. Didn't they open the year with the Tigers? Uh, no, they opened the year with the twins. Oh, okay. My bad. Yeah. So if you name, if you told me that name all the twins, I'd name them all for you. But we don't have time for that, of course. Do you know yeah, Javi Baez is a tiger? Yes, Javier Baez is a tiger. There you go. That's true. Yeah. Okay. There they you go. I don't want him to be a tiger, but he is definitely still a tiger. Hey, did you get your uh, did you get your baby a uh, little Masters caddy jumpsuit and take pictures of him? No, he has a uh, he has a green. Um, the green Under Armour polo that we used as our like, hey, it's a golf thing related outfit. As the Masters is here, it was our, it was our like two month photo of them. Yeah, I really so, like the idea of the baby basically just being a like, kind of a prop. Like you just you kind of dress it up and and then he you know, like here's my update on my life. Here's what's going on. I guess the Masters are here. Time to dress the baby up as a golfer. Yeah, that's pretty much what it'll be as we do these photos throughout this first year. I will say I looked into the caddy thing, but at just like eight weeks or nine weeks, it didn't really seem necessary to pay that amount of money. It'll be more fun like next year at a little, you know, like 14 months old, maybe walking. We can give him like a plush set of golf clubs that he can just carry around the house while wearing his jumpsuit. I think that would have more value. But even then, there, yeah, this is this is hard to believe. This level of customization is kind of expensive. What, what is it? What like how much does it cost to buy a tiny baby master's jumpsuit? Uh, depending, like they could be anywhere from like sixty to over a hundred bucks. I mean, Jeez. depending on what what you want. Which, if you think about it, anyone that's had a child, they grow relatively quick, so you don't get to you know you don't get that many wears out of little tiny baby jumpsuits. Yeah. Yeah, Master then what do you do with it? You got to find another baby to give it to. <laughs> <laughs> so, there should just be like a, people should just go in on a joint one that gets di- or like dry cleaned in between. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's definitely an app that already exists that it, we're we're thinking that we thought of, but we actually didn't. Yeah, okay. baby shareables. Uh, all right, Schaefer. Let's uh, let, let's do the recruiting parts first. Couple commitments. What do we know about? Uh, Jackson Carpenter and Bryson Hayes. Yeah, I mean, I think they're not physically the exact same because Jackson Carpenter is a little bit taller, but they strike me as really similar sort of additions here for Garrett McGuire in the wide receiver room. And they're both fast. I, I would say that's kind of the calling part for each of them is they're fast. They're track guys that can run. Um, you know, I think they both basically be utilized on special teams early in their career where they could be return men. Um, or they could also be, uh, you know, gunners, coverage unit guys, 
uh, help you in that regard. I just think that they have the athletic traits that Nebraska likes, and you go ahead and you add them both in there, and you have some wide receivers you can sort of develop on the back end, and then you have these two guys in the class, so now you can kind of go hard after a Cortez Mills or some of the other Michael Terry, some of these other wide receivers that they like in this class. You've already got a couple guys in the fold, and now you just want to add one or two more. And so it, it, that's sort of what it feels like to me. Um, they're more projectable back end of the class type individuals, but they have elite traits in that speed where you've got something to build off of. And Nebraska, I mean, really likes Bryson Hayes. I mean, he had an offer uh, last fall. They got him out for a visit. Uh, he was here on campus multiple times, came in for junior day, then they got him back here this spring. And then Jackson Carpenter was part of that wave of early offers in January that included Pierce Mooberry and some of these other guys that we anticipate could end up being commitments down the line for Nebraska, too. So uh, a couple area guys that can also be here to help as you have this big official visit uh, weekend coming up with the, the spring game and then the official visits that you'll have in June, too. It's amazing, Schaefer, that Hayes is the first guy in the class who's not from the state of Nebraska. Well, technically he's not. They had a commitment from T.J. Simon. Uh, in December, and then he decommitted at the end of January. I think one of those situations where Nebraska was going to recruit past him and everybody knew it, and so he was going to open things back up to maybe find another opportunity. But yeah, it, it was it went back to being all in-state guys, and then Jackson Carpenter was a fourth in-state guy, <laughs> and then they got really far out of state uh, with Mays High School in Kansas. Yeah, went all the way to Kansas for the guy. I we 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 probably don't talk as much anymore about like, you know, how much of what's the percentage of the class that comes from the 500 mile radius? Like, do we have a better, um, do we have a better sense of that now as we're working into Matt rules, second class and kind of beyond now, it, it, it feels like a lot of it is, is going to be in inside the radius and they're going to take in-state guys commitments from them, even though, um, you know, maybe in situations where they would have told some guys to hang on, hang on, hang on in the past. Yeah, I think, I think it's just kind of been a good run of in-state players too. You know, like yeah. you, you kind of operate with what you have. And when you have double digit in-state guys getting power, you know, we call it power four now. Have, have you made this switch? Oh, I haven't done that yet. No, I, that's the first time I've even thought of that in my brain. Like, isn't it weird? I, I had to write it the other day and I was like, I don't know if I like this. Can we just elevate the AAC to being power five level? Maybe we go to, uh, maybe we go to the basketball model and start, start calling them high majors. Okay. You could just say power conferences, but it felt so good to just say power five. Like yeah. it just fit. It yeah. worked on a lot of levels. Before. It really was. And now, now I'm over here having to say things like power four and it just doesn't, it doesn't work as well. No. Uh, so just, just something to keep in mind for everybody out there. Well, but, do we have yeah, to so, do we have to make the difference between power two and power four? Also, like, isn't there a di isn't there a tier gap there? Big two, little two. Yeah, hmm. something to think yeah, about. Brighton Hayes holds three big two offers and fourteen <laughs> little two offers, as we determined. This would have been a lot <laughs> easier for me to play the guess the recruit game uh, back on the recruiting <laughs> hour. Would have made it a lot easier for me. Oh, that game is so dead right now. <laughs> you can't, you can't play that game anymore. You just can't do it. No, no, no. They basically, I think, because it's been pretty good these last couple cycles inside the 500 mile radius, they're able to add a bunch of players in it. But I don't know that it's like, uh, I, I, it's, it's important to them because they want any talent that they can get. And we saw another offer go out in South Dakota to Sean Hammerbeck. Uh, who's in Winter, South Dakota, which I asked some South Dakotans where that's at. And it's, it's basically north of Valentine is what I'm being told. Mm, so that's out the there. part of South Dakota you don't really think about that much, or at least I don't. Uh, so he's out there. Um, so I don't even know if that's... You don't think about the Black about. Hills? Uh, generally, not when it comes to football recruiting, no. I just think of the I-29 corridor. Mm. Poll question, do you think you know, about the Black Hills? Go ahead, put in that one. General, in, Josh. in general, I really don't either. I'm yeah. not, not going to lie. It's, I, I heard it's beautiful. I want to go. I've oh, never yeah. been. It's way out there. Take take yeah. your little kid in the in the caddy costume to the to the to Mount Rushmore. He'll love it. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a nice family trip that we can put on the on the schedule here. Schaefer, the line. Uh, I want to bounce this off you. I was talking about it before uh, before we brought you on here. Um, th this idea, like 
I, I put out the the idea that it feels like Nebraska football is is just practicing, right? They they're it doesn't they're not saying anything about anything. Like we don't have to talk about position battles and that can all be sorted out during fall. Like that's kind of for us to to talk about. But like the the highlight video that they put out from the scrimmage on Saturday was just each of the quarterbacks making a throw, and that was kind of it. Like I really like it. I, I feel like the approach to to spring ball is really refreshing because it it like don't get me wrong I think it's super intense and there there there's definitely battles going on and guys got to get ahead but also at the same time you don't you don't get the sense that it's like the biggest um it's the biggest thing in the world for for this group to be doing what they're doing right now like the big picture stuff will come later. Yeah, I I think that's pretty well put, and I don't think it needs to be the biggest thing in the world. Like it just, they just need to utilize these practices to get better and for guys to to develop. And sometimes that some can be a more quiet thing than we make it uh, around here. And a lot of it has to do with Nebraska just are the big media contingent, and we have a lot of people who think about football in a lot of different ways, and it leads to different discussions, and we kind of overvalue certain things. I mean, I. I've, I've given this answer a bunch when asked about the running back position, but isn't it at this point, we just have to wait till October. Yeah. If, if we've learned nothing else about Nebraska football in the last seven to 10 years, just wait till October and the running back position will, will have some understanding of it because trying to determine who's doing well in the spring, haven't particularly gone well uh, for us in the media as, as it relates to the running back. And it hasn't resulted in that running back just taking a job and, and going with it. So I, I think if you extrapolate that, like we have a pretty good indication as to this is a veteran team. They're older. We know who a lot of these players are. There's not a lot of position battles. You have to think a lot on. They added some portal pieces you expect to be helpful. There's a freshman quarterback you anticipate to be the starter. Like the storylines are sort of all out there and the names are pretty well known. Um, I think because they're in their second year with this, like you don't have to add a lot of hype or a lot of extra to yes. it. But they just need to go and get better. And then on top of it, and this is the kind of well duh comment of all of it, they just need to go and win games. Look, that's that's all anybody at this point like how much spring hype even matters when all anybody wants around here is an eight and four season. I feel like the undertone, Shafe, it, correct me if I'm wrong here. Like th- there's an undertone to it, and it is well, if, if 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 we don't have to freak out about what running back is doing what and who stands where in the pecking order of that position or any other position, there is like an underlying, if people are willing to accept that, there is the underlying like confidence of, well, whatever happens, however it does shake out, I don't really care who's one, two, three. I just want to be confident that it'll work. And I like, I think that's kind of maybe the part that's been like we've had our nervous moments, you know, plenty of them, uh, instances of panic around here. Do you think it's more confidence than just ambivalence? Like it doesn't matter who the one, two, three are because it doesn't matter. Well, if it doesn't matter, then isn't there some sort of expectation that it's going to be okay? Or the expectation is that it, it won't dramatically affect the season one way or the other because the running back hasn't for several years. I mean, if you wanted to be cynical about it, that's the route that I would go. Well, they're going to have... Shockingly, if you wanted to be cynical about it. <laughs> that's why we talked to Mike Schaefer. They're going to have <laughs> They're going to have three... Like uh, uh, Rule even said it the other day. Like, there, there's going to be three running backs. They're going to, you know, hopefully give them, you know, two, 250 to 500 yards apiece, and, and that's going to be the story. Yeah, and it, it's kind of hard to be enthusiastic about that, whether you're a fan or whether you're a media member or... I think even a coach to a degree, like it, I, they like this running back room. They've said that since they've been here and I just have never seen it. And so a large part of it for me is like, I just need to get to, like, okay, what does it look like when they're playing, you know, Rutgers or whoever in October, or um, what does it look like when they have a, a critical game and it's third and two, are they trusting Dylan with his arm or are they going to trust the running back to try to get two yards with this offensive line? I mean, that's sort of where I'm at with it. And those questions can't be answered in the spring. And right. we've tried the last few years to answer that kind of thing. And it just, it doesn't matter. Um, but I, I just go back to this. I think it's such a veteran team that I think there's just a really strong comfort level of who's going to play, what positions they're going to be in. They've introduced some new pieces that seem like they're, they could be helpful. Um, but, you know, it, it's a weirdly quiet spring considering how important the upcoming season is. 
And oh, by the way, you have a five star freshman quarterback. Um, what, if anything, should we be on the lookout for when the transfer portal opens tomorrow? Whether it's incoming or outgoing for Nebraska? You know, it's fascinating because Nebraska has this very far back spring game, right? Like, if you are a player that wants to go into the portal, do you feel pressure to do it before your spring is even over? Or do you still need those practice reps to be able to show people, you know, or do you feel like I have to jump in there now? Otherwise I'm going to get left behind. Like it's such a, yeah, that has to be a, such a difficult conversation. And you know, there's a handful of guys for Nebraska where it's like, we're going to have to go into the portal, but is it better for me to do it right now? Or do I need to get more practice reps and then jump in two weeks from now? And maybe the finite amount of spots have already kind of, you know, uh, lessened because some of these guys have gone in and ended up somewhere else. It's a, it's a really difficult thing. My, my other view on it is, and maybe I have a complete mystery here. I don't look for Nebraska to be really big off season shoppers right now. Mm -mm. I think their roster is kind of what their roster is. And, it needs to be thinned down to meet the, the requirement of the, the 85 scholarship. But I think they have a general idea of who's on their way out. And I don't look for them to, to try to just go add pieces either. Um, I kind of think, kind of think they like what they have. At least that's the messaging is feels like it's coming out of the spring. Yeah. I kind of feel the same way. Uh, Schaefer, before we let you go, by the way, we get a tweet here from Chad who says, um, I guess this is mostly toward me. The black Hills are another, 260 miles west of Winter, South Dakota. So I, I missed by a hair. <laughs> I think the, the, the real takeaway here is Winter, South Dakota is pretty remote. Yeah. Pretty remote. Pretty, pretty remote. Okay. I don't, I'm excited to see which of the Nebraska media, Sean Hammerbeck, were to be submitted to Nebraska. <laughs> which of the Nebraska media is making the trip up to Winter, South Dakota to get those photos and video of it. Of a high school game. I can't wait to find out either. It should be very exciting. It'll be fun. So we'll, we'll put everybody in a pool and mix them around a little bit. Yeah, uh, I like it. All right, Schaefer. Thanks for the time, as always. Enjoy your week. Yeah, have a good one. Mike Schaefer, Husker 24-7. Not buyer of Masters Baby Outfit. I saw a lot of babies in Masters Caddy jumpsuits over the weekend. A lot of babies. It's a popular thing to do. It is. It is. One, no, no shame on you. It's pretty cute. Yeah, one, it's one for the dads, right? Like they don't get a lot of say in the yeah dressing of the child most days, right? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I, I've seen a lot of kids dressed up in like sports sportswear, things of that nature. Okay, so maybe that was just my house. Maybe when they're that age, you, you can just it, it's kind of just a free for all. Because that kid, I mean, the kid doesn't know. No. Then when, once the kid starts having opinions on what he wants to wear, he or she wants to wear, then yeah, then then it's a different conversation. Then you're in trouble. Yeah. Then they take over. That's start sure. talk, and they start talking back. A uh, texter from the four hundred two. My four hundred two. Wasn't it Allen Iverson that once said, "We're talking about practice"? It was. Great call by you, texter. Yeah, great call because it's also what my lower third says on zone TV. Huh. We're talking about practice. I believe the quote from AI was we talking about practice. I didn't know. How... Use, use correct AI grammar, Josh. Now that's just confusing. When you say AI, AI, Alan Iverson is <laughs> pull question. Is Alan Iverson, the real AI, <laughs> which are, which is, which is the thing you think of when you think of AI, artificial intelligence or Alan Iverson? Okay. Yeah, do that one. Vote, please. Vote now at Happer Show. Odd News is next on 1620 The Zone. Remember, no matter how you listen, it's still AM radio. 1620 The Zone.